Hello, everybody, and welcome back uh, to another week here on TCGPlayer.com. I am Conley Woods, and uh, we're looking at New Standard. Uh, last week, I checked out a Gitwog Monster Pyromancer's Goggles deck, um, and I wanted to try really hard this week to fit that shell with Traverse the Ovenwald. Uh, after a little bit of testing, though, and a little bit of deck building, I could not get the, the two strategies to overlap well enough. Basically, needing Delirium, in addition to building your deck with a bunch of one ofs and a bunch of tutor targets and whatnot, uh, it has some difficulty overlapping with the land strategy. Really, the only card that kind of worked between the two was um, Tormenting Voice, because you got to discard extra copies of uh, bad cards or whatever. Um, and then, obviously, when goggles came down, you were good. But with that said, I threw out the goggles and decided just to focus on Traverse the Ovenwald because the idea seems sweet and the card's pretty low cost. It's like under a ticket on Magic Online right now, which is a little surprising to me. So I wanted to see if we can do anything with it. Um, so the big thing here with this deck is not necessarily the specific makeup of the deck. That's likely to change uh, heavily in the next few playtests. Um, but the big thing is the concept and the kind of overall shell. So, with Traverse the Open Wall, we know a couple things. It kind of builds our deck for us in some ways, because we know what we need. Uh, we want a bunch of cool creatures that we could tutor for. Uh, we obviously need some number of basics that we could tutor for, just in case we're casting this when it's not kicked with Delirium. Uh, we want some number of cool non-basics to be able to grab once it has Delirium. And then we also need the things to give ourselves Delirium. So that right there is already a ton of moving parts, and we get to work with that uh, and basically traverse the Olden Wall is the, is the center, is the driving force of, uh, of our list. Um, so I specifically went with Oath of Nyssa to back it up. Uh, this does two things uh, that work really well with Traverse. One, it gives us another sort of tutor uh, for individual Creature cards, obviously looking at the top three cards, not the same as tutor, but we get to go through a little bit more of our deck, see a few more cards, um, and we're more likely to find a specific one of that we need for a task. Uh, additionally, this is an enchantment, and it's a legendary enchantment, so playing a second one of these will get an enchantment in the art, which will help trigger uh, Delirium for this, or help enable Delirium for this. The next four of that I decided to go with was uh, Deathcap Cultivator. I'm not certain on this guy. This could e this slot could easily be like one Deathcap Cultivator, one Sylvan Advocate, one I don't know. Uh, uh, let's say the two. What's the Abbot of Carol Keep? Like that kind of stuff. Uh, but I went with Deathcap Cultivator just to help smooth out mana. We're going for Delirium anyway, so this thing is theoretically going to get Death Touch in a late game, which is uh, pretty nice. And he produces mana. Uh, and kind of accelerates us and smooths us out. And since we have a pretty high curve in terms of expensive stuff over here, um, you know, that seemed like an appealing trait to me. Uh, also, we went a little bit low on the lands with only 24 because we have these eight cards that kind of grab us lands. Um, well, definitely grab us lands in the case of Traverse the Olden Wald, but uh, we'll more often than not grab us land with Oath of Dis as well. Uh, but because of those eight cards, we could actually go down on the land count a little bit, uh, and then we also have now Deathcap Cultivator to add even more mana to the deck, so even though we're at 24 mana, uh, a lot of which uh, do kind of special things for us, like Westville Abbey or Blighted Fen, uh, even though we're at 24 mana, we're actually at a lot more than that. Uh, so then we have Hangerback Walker, I have him in the two drop slot because I think that's the most common play, but uh, he is mostly in here because he's an artifact and a creature, so he helps to deli enable Delirium two different ways. Uh, he's going to work through our mana. If we have any mana problems with this deck, this guy gets around that. Uh, also produces a bunch of tokens, which can be helpful with something like Westville Abbey. Um, just all around. I mean, everyone knows how strong this is. Um, and then from there, I think every... Oh, we have two Colligan's Commands, uh, one Pulse, and one Den Protector, alongside one Goblin Dark Dwellers. So when you combine this whole package up, what it lets us do is... I'll, while we have a bunch of creatures that are one ofs, we get to recycle them in a bunch of cool ways. So we get to rebuy them with Colligan's Command, we get to rebuy them with Pulse of Marasa, we get to rebuy those with Goblin Dark Rollers, we then get to rebuy like one of the spells we got to get back Goblin Dark Rollers, which will then get back a spell. Which will, and basically, we just get to, in the late game, go through our deck and reuse a bunch of one ofs over and over and over again uh, without having to devote too many cards to that package. Like I said, it's only two uh, Colligan's Commands, one Pulse. Um, one Goblin Dark Dwellers right now, there's a second one on the sideboard, and, no, not that, this, and, uh, one Den Protector, and I think that's enough for now. I debated having the second Pulse in the main deck, but ultimately I just couldn't fit it. 
That also gives us some instants to work with uh, for Delirium and a little bit of removal in the main deck. Alongside two Ruinous Paths, uh, again, some sorceries for Delirium and just go all-around removal spell. Um, then we have a bunch of one-ofs, which I'll talk about in a second. One-ofs, one-ofs, one-ofs. So yeah, everything else in the deck is one-ofs. Um, there was a, were a couple two-ofs for a while, but I ultimately ended up cutting them. There were like two Kalidus, there were two, there were actually three Goblin Dark Dwellers for a while, but I decided just to cut everything down, bare minimum as possible, highest toolbox, uh, where we, we have so many cool things we can grab at all different times, we really can adapt to the game at any point in time, uh, and that was kind of my goal here. So, I'll just run through these guys really quickly, because they're all going to be pretty situational. Uh, Dragon Master Outcast, cheapest got, cheapest one condition you can grab, so if you're tight on mana or whatever, uh, and you have a Traverse as a play and an extra mana floating around, this guy's awesome at that. Um... Yeah, just not much to say here. Basically, just straight up win condition. He's good against uh, counter spell decks and things like that. Um, one flashback marauder as a tutorable edict seems useful. Um, one tireless tracker. He's just good all around creature. I had four in the deck for a long time, but I ended up cutting three of them. Uh, if if there is a card that's going to go up in number, this would be one that would not be surprised, uh, just because of how how strong the card he is. Uh, one Den Protector kind of already explained his role. He's mostly in here as a regrowth, but um, you can cycle him with uh, with Colgan's Command indefinitely and stuff like that. Silengar's Assassin, uh, removal spell on legs. Kalidus is going to beat the Black Green Aristocrats deck by itself. It's going to be great against Aggro decks just because of Life Life Link, good all around thing. Obviously, there's two more of those in the sideboard. Uh, a Pia and Kieran and Lar gives us three bodies with one card, which is helpful for something like Westville Abbey. Also, the Sacrifice effect comes in handy with Hangerback Walker. Um, plenty of situations where this is going to be our best card to grab. Uh, one Sorak in here mostly for the haste granting, which we actually replicate again with Dragon Lord Colligan. But uh, uh, undercosted five four that gives haste to uh, to one of our gigantic fatties, which we have plenty of, seems useful. There are plenty of other good cards that we can include over this um, in the 4-drop slot, so he's certainly one to pay attention to, because I think he's probably going to be one of the weaker cards in the deck. Um, one Thought Knots here. We have plenty, we have six or seven colorless sources to uh, play this with, um, so I'm not too worried about not being able to cast it. It's the only colorless card in the deck uh, in terms of having a casting cost that's colorless. Obviously, great utility card. One Goblin Dark Dwellers to just win the game going long. One Gitrog Monster as a bit of an engine. We have uh, one Blighted Fen, four Evolving Wilds uh, that trigger it naturally, and then also um, four Hissing Quagmire in here that can trade, obviously. Not to mention just casting and sacrificing land every turn is totally fine. Um, one Olvenwald Hydra. This is to give us kind of the the cake and eating it too scenario where we have traversed the Olvenwald in hand and we want to we want to get a non basic land but we have a million mana so we're like oh what the fuck we do in the meantime you can traverse for your Olvenwald Hydra you can traverse the Olvenwald for an Olvenwald Hydra cast the Olvenwald Hydra go get the land that you wanted to grab but traverse anyway go get a, go up a, a mana in play and a, a gigantic creature in play. Um, Colgan in here for his haste ability, although I'm guessing that that 10 damage uh, ability will come up some number of times, so that's an interesting one to pay attention to. Also, he's a 6 power haste creature on his own, which is helpful, especially post-board when we go haste heavy against control. Um, one world breaker in here mostly as a way to deal with artifacts and enchantments in the main deck, but he also is good against control going along. Uh, he also triggers Gitrog Monster with his sacrifice of land clause. One Dragon Lord of Tarka to clean up the board. Deal with Planeswalkers as a tutorable card. Shouldn't need to explain this one too much. Great with Colligan, of course. Um, then the sideboard, I kind of extended that plan a little bit to some more one ofs. Uh, there's two Kalidus, but it kind of serves the same idea. One uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers to help out against control and enable our kind of uh, in and out recycling plan. One Minister of Pain to deal with aggro decks. Um, one Gold Knight Castigator as a 4-drop haste creature against Control. So against Control, we ultimately go up We go up Reality Smasher as a 5-drop haste creature. Gold Knight uh, Castigator as a 4-drop haste creature. And all these cards are pretty hard to deal with, too. Uh, Guy's Revenge as a 7-drop haste creature. And then that's in addition to Colgan at 6-drop. Um, so you, just, you have these, like, haste threats at every single uh, part of the curve. And I think that 
might be able to overwhelm control. Not 100%, but we're also bringing other stuff against them. Uh, one Conclave Naturalist. In here is a Disenchant that is a little cheaper than Worldbreaker. Um, and yeah, that's it for that. Spell-wise, we have two Pictobrains and two Duress to help us against control or combo. Seems necessary. And then I have three Radiant Flames. I'm not 100% sold on this, but uh, I was a little worried about aggro getting too far ahead of us before we can uh, kind of get our legs and turn into the mid-range beast that we are. So three Radiant Flames is supposed to help out with that, along with the Minister of Pain uh, in, our si or the, in the creature slot over here. Um, as far as lands are concerned, our specialty lands to grab include Blighted Fen, uh, Mortuary Mire, which again gives us another uh, reuse of our creatures, and we can tutor it up. So it lets us rebuy Goblin Dark Dwellers or Den Protector. Um, a Westville Abbey, a Four Hissing Quagmire, and that is it. So a decent little selection of stuff in addition to some, you know, mana fixing lands and whatnot. But that is the deck. I'm going to give it a shot, uh, run it through some two-man queues. I'm pretty excited. Uh, it looks like a fun, kind of grindy deck, uh, straight up out of Jun's playbook. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to keep trying out Gitrog monsters in different uh, shells. I think that this particular list could also be Sultai or Abzan. Uh, both those are reasonable directions to take it. I'm going to try Jund for now. But, uh, yeah, we'll be right back for round one here momentarily. Again, Conley Woods for TCGplayer.com playing some uh, Traverse the Frog.